What's going on, y'all? I cannot believe we are already here. I just looked through my catalog and I did the episode one recap for Married at First Sight UK back on August 30th. And here we are. It is October. What is today's day? It is October 13th and we are on episode 28. That is crazy sauce. Um, if you have been here with me since the beginning, thank you so much. If you found me along the way, thank you so much. If you just got here, thank you so much. Anyway, let's get into these final vows. After I sat back and thought about it and realized that production kind of went out of their way to show us that clip of Jonathan saying, I feel bad now, after Sophie had read her vows, um, I realized that he was probably going to say yes, because they showed us that clip a few different times. Uh, so that's what ended up, that is what ended up happening. Uh, he did say that he wants to continue things with Sophie. Um, so with them, I with his vows, rather, um, I appreciated what he said to her. He didn't like, you know have a bunch of unrealistic, you know, promises in his vows. He was pretty much like, you know, um, I like you. I like what we have started here. I want to keep moving forward and see where this goes. He didn't promise her, you know, he didn't promise marriage or moving in together or kids, any of that stuff that is, you know, way, way, way down the road and they don't know how that's going to work yet. He's just like, you know, um, I want to keep, I want to continue this in the outside and we'll we'll take it from there. So, you know, that's for given their situation that they started the experiment late and all that stuff. I think that is, that, that was a good choice of words and, you know, just not giving her a bunch of false hope. So I appreciated that for the moment that they are in. Will this make it on the outside? Don't know yet. With Shanita and Jordan, I thought it was going to be like a no-brainer slam dunk that they were both going to say yes until we saw the segment with Jordan talking to his mom. And I'm sure this was just a snippet of their conversation, um, but just, you know, the feedback that he gave her and the insight that his mom gave us about him has me a little worried um, because they both said he's a little bit of a people pleaser. He himself said that he tends to compromise what he wants to keep the peace, and he said he's done that um, with her a lot. Uh, he said, he talked about, um, how one week during the commitment ceremony, he felt like he was broken and a shell of himself. Um, that's, that's a little concerning. So going in to this commitment ceremony, um, I, I have no doubt in Shanita's mind, this commitment ceremony is them committing to be, um, continue being a married couple. So the next logical step would be moving in together and all that stuff. Whereas, you know, um, I think he's more, I think Jordan's more thinking like Jonathan, like, yeah, we'll keep moving forward. We, we have a good, um, we have the groundwork set for us to continue moving forward as a couple, but he's not thinking like, you know, um, locking it down just yet. He wants to just keep, you know, seeing where this goes. But with Shanita, like I said, she's like in it to win it. Um, and because of that, him saying yes is a lot bigger deal for her than him, like the way that Jonathan said yes to Sophie. Um, so going into their ceremony, I feel like him saying yes um, was on saying yes to what Shanita wants as far as, you know, locking it down and they were like officially, officially official, you know? So I, I don't think he wanted to say yes to her in that way. I think he wanted to say yes, but not in the way that she wanted to hear it. But I think he said yes in the way that she wanted to hear it um, to make her happy. Does that make sense what I just said? It makes sense in my head. Anyway, uh, I, 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 I now have concerns about the situation right here. So yeah. Of course, these two said yes to staying together. They just got together 18 minutes ago. It's still very new. It's still very passionate. They have not had conflict yet. Well, they have, when I say that, I mean, they haven't had conflict between the two of them. They haven't had like a couple fight or, you know, a disagreement, a significant disagreement at this point. The conflict that they have experienced has been from outside entities and the conflict they had with those other people just pushed them together closer. You know, it just made their bond stronger because they were fighting against enemy forces. You know what I'm saying? But between the two of them, they haven't had any real conflict yet. So they've just been having like good conversation and good sex. So why would you say no to that? You know what I'm saying? And so moving forward, they are they are saying they are saying yes to moving forward in a long distance relationship because they live three hours apart. So them being long distance and it's still in the hot and heavy phase, I think them not seeing one another all the time is going to keep it in the hot and heavy phase that much longer. You know, um, of course, with long distance, shit does get hard after a while. You know, people start canceling weekends and stuff like that. But in the beginning, you know, no, it's easy breezy it's great and when you get together it is wonderful um so i think um when there but when their conflict does come 
oh shit. But you know, for now, I think I think they're on easy street um, in this in this little world that they have created for themselves. Um, but you know, reality reality will kick in eventually, no doubt. Um, but with Whitney's vows, I thought her vows were interesting because she made it a point to mention Matt's mom, and um, that got me to wondering, like on some level, I wonder if she realizes that maybe this relationship is appealing to her because it's a little therapeutic for her. Um, knowing that her mother passed away unexpectedly, she did not get to say goodbye to her mother. And now she's with this man whose mother is dying. You know, she couldn't be there to say goodbye to her mother and, you know, process all of that. And, you know, um, in, in a traditional way of when you know your, your parent is going to die, even though we, none of us can usually predict it. But, you know, in Matt's case, you know, she can be there to support him um, during this transition, saying goodbye to his mother. She can be there, um, you know, for him. And that might be in a, in a way healing for her. Um, so I wonder if he realizes that. But anyway, um, as far as these two saying yes, like I said... Obviously. All right, now that final vows are out of the way, let's talk about the reunion and who we think is going to walk in together as a still intact couple. Now, with the final vows, they're, you know, they're they're all sweet and fluffy and people say nice things and they make promises. But the reality is when they're saying yes at final vows, they're saying yes to that person that they knew inside the bubble of the experiment. They weren't saying yes to that person in their reality because they have not seen that person in their reality. And that might be a very different person. You know, they might, you know, um, have similar values and everything, but their day to day habits and lifestyle and stuff um, that could cause some conflict that might not be worth, you know, fighting for um, when it it comes down to it, honestly, you know, um, one person's partner might be a workaholic and the other person might not be down. They might not care enough, you know, a lot about work like that. One person um, might still be about the nightlife and going to the clubs and happy hour three or four times a week and the other person is a homebody. So, um, you know, and they wouldn't really see that as much in the experiment because all they have is each other um, inside of the experiment. So I think, you know, the real world is going to make a difference. Um, so with that being said, who do I think is going to come back to the reunion as an intact couple? That's it. I, I uh, At this point, I only think that um, after they have um, had some time away from the experiment, I think only Matt and Whitney are going to come back as, as an intact couple. And it's all, probably only going to be because they are long distance. They did, they did not, you know, in their vows and in their deal, you know, they've professed their love for one another and everything. But all I really heard them committing to was continuing um, to see where things go. They made no promises. Neither of them made promises to relocate or anything that they, they knew they were getting into a long distance this relationship. So um, with that, you know, with that commitment, I, I think that they're going to still be doing that when it comes time for the reunion. As far as the other three, I, I, I don't, I don't know that they're going to make it on the outside. Of course, I could be wrong. This is all just a crapshoot. Um, but with like with uh, Shanita and Jordan, you know, um, she 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 wants she is ready to be the wife. You know, and I think he he his commitment level is for them to be a super serious boyfriend girlfriend couple. That's what I see their their conflict being with those two. Um, and I just can't stop thinking about him telling his mom that at one point in the experiment, you know, he felt like he was broken and a shell of himself. That's that's just a very bad way to describe things that early on. Um, and then with uh, Zoe and Jenna. You know, I think they really care about each other, but I think the reality of the kid thing is going to hit and the, the living situation thing. I think the realities um, of those conflicts are going to hit and I don't think that they're really, really going to want to put years into something and to, to possibly be wasting their time or to resent the other person because they did or did not have kids. They put, you know, they put four or five years into it. I think that is maybe going to hit them sooner than they realize. And I think that they might part ways because of that. Um, which, you know, you know, better sooner rather than later, right? You know, um, you don't want to force someone to have kids or, you know, guilt someone into having kids that doesn't want to have kids and you don't want somebody to not have kids because you're not really into it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't see it for them on the outside. And um, as far as Sophie and Jonathan... Um, there's a couple of things here. One, I think with these two, I think it's going to maybe end on his terms if it does end. Because if she stayed up until this point, 
with what we with what, at least with what what we have seen, and she still said yes. I think it would be one of those relationships where she's going to stick it out until he just says he's done. But I could be wrong on that point too. Um, again, these are all just things that are happening in my head at the moment. But with Sophie and Jonathan, um, from what we know of her and him, um, she is very dedicated to her career, and so I wonder if maybe she's a little bit of a workaholic, and we know he is the opposite. You know, he works enough to keep shelter over his head and food in his tummy. So, you know, is that going to cause conflict for them? And I believe when we first met her, she was still into going out with her girlfriends, you know, going to the bars a few times a week, and he doesn't really do that anymore. So is there going to be issue there? Um, so, you know, I just, I, 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 like I said, you know, they all said yes at final vows, but is, you know, that yes going to translate into reality? I don't think so. Yeah. So that, those are, my, that's my prediction right now. I'm only seeing um, Matt and Whitney walking in as still an intact couple, but we'll see you on Monday. Before I go, I want to talk about the reunion real quick and what we can expect because they showed us a little teaser at the end of the episode. So it looks like they're doing it the same way they do it in Australia. And if you are not familiar, what's going to happen is it's going to be a two-night event. So it's going to be on Monday night and Tuesday night are the reunion episodes. So Monday night is going to be what we see here. It's going to be the dinner party um, with all of the returning cast. So we're going to see, um, as you can see here, we got PJ and Jess. Um, I saw Richie's ass over there somewhere. So I'm assuming Laura is there as well. So the the entire cast for the entire season comes back for this final dinner party and then on Tuesday um, everybody will get together with the experts to do kind of a, it's not going to be a commitment ceremony but they're going to have each couple sit in front of the experts and just talk about what they're doing now in life kind of thing um, so that's what we can expect all I do hope is that Richie does not pull out some damn guitar because I will have a strongly worded tweet ready to go if he does, because we ain't got time for that shit. But anyway, with the dinner party episode, that's already going to be heated, I can tell, because I don't know if you can see it. We see Whitney um, and Matt, but across from Matt, I see Duca. Now, I know Duca don't give two shits, but I'm assuming if Duca's right there, I'm assuming that Gemma is right next to him. So that means that Gemma is directly across from Whitney. Production is some messy bitches. I tell you what, and with all the free alcohol flowing too, you know there's going to be a fight or two. That's going to be a big old hot ass mess, but I'm looking forward to it. All right, that's all I got. I will see you back for night one of the reunion.